Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about refrigerant system evacuation. At first, let's take a look at basic refrigeration cycle and its components. This is the tubing. This is the compressor that pumps and cycles the refrigerant. This is the metering or throttling device that controls the amount of liquid refrigerant going to the evaporator. This is the condenser, where gas refrigerant loses its heat and change to liquid state. This is the evaporator, where liquid refrigerant quickly changes its state to gas and absorbs heat giving a cooling effect to the surroundings. Usually, we have surface valves at the two sides of the system. Most condensers have a fan to cool them. The refrigeration system is completely isolated from air and under pressure. If a leak occurs for any reason, the refrigerant inside it will leak into the air. The opposite cannot happen as long as the system is perfectly closed. If we have to open the system to air while servicing it, for example changing defective compressor, the air will enter the system, and here we will need to get rid of the air that entered the system before we charge it with refrigerant. Why do we do that? Evacuating a refrigeration system serves two primary goals. The first is to remove non-condensable gases. The second is to dehydrate the system, which means getting rid of water vapor and drops. If non-condensable materials such as air are not removed, the system will operate at higher than normal condensing pressures. This happens because the non-condensing air is trapped at the top of the condenser, which effectively reduces the condenser capacity. Increasing condensing pressure leads to higher compression rates and higher discharge temperatures, both of which reduce system efficiency and can lead to lower reliability. Water vapor must be removed from conic systems for several reasons. Water vapor can freeze up at the expansion devices, such as thermal expansion valve and capillary tubes, causing a complete loss of the cooling effect. Moisture, refrigerants, and heat can also combine to form acids. These acids mix with the oil and metalware particles leading to the formation of a sludge. This sludge tends to collect in hotter areas, usually the exhaust valve plate, and if allowed to build up, can prevent the exhaust valves from closing properly. The evacuation will not draw liquid water out of the system. When you evacuate system, you are dropping the pressure enough to allow water to boil at room temperature. When the water boils, it naturally changes to a state of vapor, and this vapor is drawn out by the vacuum pump. 